Well, now we've got some choices to make. I'm a big old geek for portable computing and expanding our capabilities on the go, making things a little nicer when you're on the road. I recently spent some time with the Innosyn Art Monitor, and now they've sent over their new portable OLED to take on a test drive. It's pretty nice. They have two sizes. I'm trying out the 15.6 inch screen. Apologies, because it's probably gonna catch some glare at some point with my studio lights. This line has been refreshed with a new metal build. Nice, clean, flat sides. It's a little bit bigger than my lapel portable, but thinner than my Y Max it. Getting into the design immediately, I'm not sure if this feature will be considered cool or not. I gotta be real careful how I do this here, but there's a magnetic disc on the back where you can attach an arm, this arm is included, to prop up the monitor. On its own, I get it. It's nicer looking and it is a little bit more stable than the tablet style folio cases that some of the other monitors I've used have included. And it would be really cool if there were other accessories to have like a proper home monitor arm and then when you wanted to travel you just pop the screen off that arm and throw it in a bag. Magnets these days, what can't they do? But onto the design of this, because there's a bit of a hinge here, it can be a little tricky orienting the monitor for the, for the angle that you want to see it. If you push down too aggressively, it can pop off the base. And then after a certain angle, this hinge can't keep the rest of the monitor pointing up and it'll just sort of slowly slump down on your desk. <laughs> As you can see right now, it's doing a respectable job staying put, staying on this. I'm I'm being very careful here not to shake it too much. On that design, the only other thing that I think I would add would maybe be some feet to the bottom edge of this panel. You're always going to be on an edge. And again, when you're just plopping it down on a desk like my cheap Ikea desk, it is kind of easy to slide this around. Something right here that's a little grippier would would be appreciated. Considering there's a price premium for OLED, it might be a bit of a bummer for some folks that there is no travel sleeve in the box. I really don't love the folio cases for propping the monitor up, but there is it's something nice to have when you just wanna protect the screen. Connectivity is super simple. One mini HDMI and two USB-C. It's labeled where the top USB is for video signal and the bottom is for power. The bottom port, can accept a video signal directly from a laptop too. So you can go over one USB if your computer or laptop will supply enough power. Currently, I'm streaming this movie directly through a phone. A phone is able to put out enough power to drive this display. Obviously, the HDMI connector won't power the monitor, which is where you would need an external power source, either a plug or some kind of portable battery. Again, I can power it off of a phone, so you know you don't need a lot of juice. You just gotta watch the cables. There's a different cable for power and video supplied, and they do feel like they have different gauge shielding. I also hooked it up to some nicer USB cables that I have bought, th those that are rated for higher power on fast chargers, like my little braided cable here, those have worked great too. We're in very good shape to connect to just about any modern gadget, phones, tablets, computers, cameras, consoles. You just might need to supply power if the host can't quite juice this up. The speakers on tap are kinda thin. There's no way around that whenever we have a portable display. I suppose they're better than nothing, but I've been playing with phones and the Steam Deck that can not only hang with these, but probably outperform them with room to spare. I always think it's nice to have a little battery backup, but when unexpected events happen though, sometimes we just need bigger power. Let's start chatting about oh, good emergency prep tech. Also interesting that there's no headphone jack. That's something we usually see on a portable monitor, but they're rarely great. So I don't know if that's too sad of an omission. The headphone jack on the Steam Deck and my Surface Laptop Go are both way better than any headphone jack I've tried on monitors, docks, or hubs. So for all the cool design and ports and layouts, this is a portable display, so we should probably talk about display quality. It's really good. You know how we take a portable LCD and we start chatting about backlighting and contrast, display uniformity, and this is just noticeably better. The contrast is inky, the colors are crazy vibrant, it just looks really nice. The manufacturer specs claim 100% DCI-P3, out of the box, I doubt the monitor is calibrated for professional use. It's really juicy, so I expect some tweaking will need to happen before you trust it on photo or video editing. That kind of performance matters though, because 
I don't think it unreasonable to try something like this as a display for a camera on a low budget film shoot. I mean, yes, some adjustments for sure, but I feel you could trust it for solid work. Viewing angles are absolutely excellent for a portable monitor. I tend not to worry about extreme off-axis viewing as a little movable monitor should be easier to place in a position more in front of the user. Even if you have to angle it out a little bit, OLEDs are really nice for that. This is a 60 hertz panel, so it's not going to be premium tier gaming monitor. If you're used to twitchier frame rates on first person shooters, this will definitely feel a little pokey and a little laggy. But it also kind of depends on what you pair it with. This might not be the permanent desktop monitor you use for high-end desktop gaming, but it's a great solution to throw in a backpack with a portable console like a Switch or a Steam Deck. Those portable jobs are built around 720p gaming at 60 hertz. This 1080p display did the trick with my Steam Deck. I mean, especially if you're getting in there and tweaking your frame rate on your games for better battery life or more consistent frame rates. The brightness might be a bit of a concern depending on usage and application. Roughly 400 nit maximum brightness, it looks great indoors. It's probably gonna struggle a little bit when it has to compete with more outdoor ambient light. And Innocent lists up front, this is not to be used in any kind of direct sun. It's not that kind of product. But just in my anecdotal usage, this is such a pretty screen to kind of prop up around the house, plug into my Steam Deck, plug into a phone, and it's such a vibrant and contrasty image. That's probably where we should start wrapping this video up. These kinds of monitors are great travel to your destination solutions, right? Like, we're, <laughs> you're never gonna use this on an airplane, but it's awesome when you get to the hotel room. A Nintendo Switch plays games great, but when you know you're gonna be chilling for a bit, why not break out the bigger screen to play on? Really, the only tricky bit here, looking at portability and price, OLED raises prices a little bit. It's not hard finding good, inexpensive 1080p LCDs. You know, someone needs to balance the compromises. A mobile screen is useful for a variety of situations, and in some of those situations, OLED image quality might not be as critical as just presenting a bigger image, especially since this is a non-touch enabled display. Decent 1080p displays are dropping in price. And then we can move up in price to battery powered portable screens. Now maybe someone might want to consider more of a laptop style dock for extra IO and battery life. And then we start climbing up to a more premium tier where we balance OLED panels at 1080p against LCDs at 4K. That's a choice, color and contrast versus higher resolution. If you want both UHD and OLED, those prices get higher still. And that's the great thing about choice. We can get really specific about the features and prices that make sense for individual users. The Innocent OLED is really pretty. There are definitely going to be people interested in that. So I will of course leave some links down below where you can find more information on the Innocent 15.6 inch portable OLED display. What I'm showing off right here, I'm amazed that for most of this video, I was able to just kind of keep it propped up. It's really not that heavy though. My shoulder is starting to get a little achy. Yes, link below in the description where you can shop one of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you checking out links in the descriptions, if you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're shopping a little merch, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. They're about to get quite a bit of exclusive content on this shiny glowing rectangle right here. Stay tuned, it's gonna get real fun. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.